What's going on guys? Wes with another review. This one is finally on the Rad Ones, the most anticipated and sought after shoe to date, just because it's a new player on the market, which you don't see a lot of, especially in a very competitive market with names like Nike and Reebok out there. And I gotta say, if you haven't seen my video with the founder and CEO, Ben, please go check that out. It also includes my first impressions, which have actually held up. So I've been fortunate enough to have these shoes only two days less than they've actually been available on the market, which which has allowed me over that time period to have 18 full workouts of every move that I could absolutely think of, even the ones that I think suck, like wall walks, just because I want a credible and detailed and experienced review, and that's what I do on this channel. So, because of all that, I can confidently say that the Rad One is the absolute best cross-training designed shoe for distance running. That's not something I've ever said before. Even the most notable shoes that I absolutely love and recommend to people, which are the Nike Metcon 7s and the Nano Xs, not the X1s, the Nano Xs, I would always say that they're good to about 800 meters in one go because there's a spectrum. A cross training shoe has to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. And on the absolute opposite sides of that spectrum, you have distance running and you have heavy lifting. And I would say like the Nike Metcon 7 is probably the most balanced shoe to date. That's still even leaning more towards the heavy lifting. And I still don't really want to run distance in those shoes. You can do it. It's just not necessarily comfortable. Now the Rad 1s actually lean more heavily towards that distance running side, meaning that I have done workouts, including a 5K in these. I didn't feel you know as good as I would have in a dedicated running shoe, but I just really wanted to push the limits and see how I felt, and they felt fine, just, just fine. And I wouldn't do that with any other shoe. And that, again, has a lot to do with something I discussed in my first video. It's this interior swell foam, and then it's encased in this thermoplastic polyurethane cage, which really holds that absorption. A good example would be these Allbirds. Now, this is sweet foam, which I think is a derivative of the swell foam or a close cousin to it, and it's just really squishy. If you've never worn Allbirds, they are really, really comfortable, and that's because it allows the forces in your foot to be absorbed by this foam and then disperse the forces throughout and you can't really do that if you're gonna lift heavy with something like a cross training shoe so what rad did using some knowledge I believe from the old Nike design lab up in Portland Oregon is wrap it around with this thermoplastic polyurethane or TPU which just really holds in those forces so when you're running you will have a dispersion of forces within that swell foam but you're not gonna have as much as you would in like a traditional running shoe and then with that TPU when you're lifting heavy weights or probably more on the lighter to modest side of weights, which would probably be the most safe, and I'll get in that in a second, then you're gonna have that hugging and allowing the forces to go through your foot, through the shoe, into the ground where it needs to be, and keeping that stability. Now, where I saw this really break down was at weights north of 275 pounds, and I really pushed those limits in my power lifts or even like a power clean or a clean just to see exactly what I would feel or what would I see at those weights. So 225 was fine, just kept adding weight. Then I could start feeling really something noticeable around 275 and it was very noticeable as you can see in this video at 315 in these squats. Now to Rad One's defense, I will say that at those weights, maybe on the power lifts, it's better to even go barefoot, something I feel more comfortable in just to allow that natural foot splay and work on stability and feel different muscles in your foot rather than being encased in a cage, which that's what a shoe is. And then on the Olympic lifts, when you get towards those weights, then you're probably gonna wanna be using something like a dedicated Olympic lifting shoe, just for that elevated 20 millimeter heel drop, giving you more of that ankle mobility and you get deeper in those squats. So, you know, if you already have something like that in your shoe bag, then these are gonna be a perfect accessory for your workouts. Again, this is going to be a fantastic shoe for Murph. Like, anything with distance running. And you know what, I actually felt comfortable, like even at those heavier weights, it's unlikely, maybe deadlifts occasionally, that you're gonna see those weights paired up with some sort of plyometric movement or some distance running movement, unless someone's going absolutely insane with their programming. So the shoe is fine. 
Like for the most part, you can wear the shoe, you could be happy with it, and you're not gonna have any issues with it. It's just something to note and something that's a bit of a breakdown that I really didn't see with the Nike Metcon 7s or the Nano Xs. But then again, I wouldn't use those for distance running. And that's just kind of that heavy balance that you see. So that explains exactly this cage. As far as the knit upper, uh, the aesthetically, I think it looks really great. They got a, another rad global logo back here. And then the breathability, it's fine. I mean, I sweat a lot. I didn't have any issues with it, but I did dirty these white ones up pretty good. And that just proves that I beat the hell out of these things. Not only did I just work out in them, I walked around in them because I thought they looked nice and they felt great on the foot just walking around. So the bottom, this pattern that they have down here, it's inspired by skate shoes, just really grip. They've even released some videos of some skaters using these shoes and it feels good. Like even on those crappy wall walks, I could feel the shoe really gripping that wall and it's not going to increase your times by any means. I don't think you're gonna set any world records or have any noticeable performance improvement, but I did feel it. And that was something to note. So I wish I actually had a video. So at Wadapalooza, Torque Fitness was there and they had this like challenge where you could push down and back the Torque sled. And I wore my Gorex, which is an absolutely great shoe, but I was slipping on the turf. I wore these and redid it and there was no slippage. It immediately hugged that ground and pushed me forward. So that also helps for running. One last thing to note is they are $150. Uh, go back and see my video. I asked Ben about that. The idea is that they are a brand new company. They're a brand new startup. They can't buy in large quantities, so that affects their margin, and then they have to increase the price. And they also have a 1% to global climate initiatives, so you're also paying for that as well. And that's just gonna be something that they wanna do and how they wanna give back. That's gonna be their mission. RAD, actually internally, I don't know if it's like public or official, but he told me is rally against destruction, and that has to do with how shoes are manufactured because the pollutants of manufacturing, especially the rubber parts, is pretty bad. And that's it as far as the shoe concerned. In my rankings of all the shoes I own, all the shoes I've reviewed, which has been a lot, it is right after the Nano X. So for me, Metcon 7, Nano X, and then the Rad 1. And for a brand new company and their first iteration of a shoe to be third on my list is absolutely incredible and phenomenal and it's going to be very exciting what they come up with in the future and the reason they are ranked so high is because they've gotten this niche and specialty of being a distance cross training shoe so this will be a go-to shoe for distance running for plyometric focus body weight focus workouts and again these will be my shoe for the Merv. So that's it for this review. If you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you loved it. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when my reviews come out. And I will see you in the next one. Go get after it.